the new For Each Object Parallel Support in PowerShell 7. For Each Object Parallel is a new parameter set to the existing For Each Object command line that you probably are familiar with. In the past, you've likely used it with this process parameter and then a script block. Normally, when you've used this commandlet, each object is piped to the commandlet and processed sequentially. But with this new parallel support and the new parallel parameter set, we can run the same command, but have each object piped into the script run in parallel. As you can see in this example, this allows the command to be run in one second instead of five seconds. Since the script blocks are run in parallel, each of the one to five piped input integers, the order of execution is not guaranteed, but it does increase the speed at which the overall task is performed. As you can see, I've also used the throttle limit parameter. This limits the number of script blocks running in parallel at a given time, and the default value is five. This new feature also supports jobs, we can choose to have a job object return instead of having the results written to the console. While this simple example might seem trivial, you can immediately see significant improvements when applying this parallelism to larger tasks. I'll get this next example running. In this next example, I'm pulling in some log files and pushing them into dump folders. Here, I'm using the process keyword as I would have in the past. While this is running so we can have a good comparison, I want to share with you more about the new parameter set, um, how it works, and what some of its limitations are. So for starters, I want to specify that um, it's important to note that this is not um, the same for the for each language keyword. This is just for the for each object commandlet. Um, the for each keyword does not handle piped input, but instead iterates over an enumerable object. And there's currently no parallel support for the for each keyword. The for each object parallel works by using PowerShell run spaces. Here, the script um, is run on the local machine within the same process, but on separate threads. This does not use the PowerShell remoting system, which does reduce the overhead and is generally much faster than other types of parallelism in PowerShell, like remoting or jobs. However, there's still quite a bit of overhead to run script blocks in parallel. Script blocks run in a con are run in a context called a run space, and the run space contains all the defined variables, functions, and loaded modules. So initializing a run space for a script to run in takes time and resources. When scripts are run in parallel, um, they must have each variable explicitly passed into the new run space. Given the overhead um, required for running scripts in parallel, the throttle limit can become very important um, to prevent the system from being overwhelmed. So that while there are some cases where running a lot of script blocks in parallel makes sense, there are also cases where it might not. So we can see that this first example using the process keyword ran in one minute and 27 seconds. I have the same example, but instead I've used the parallel keyword in a throttle limit of three. Um, so we can test this for comparison. So, as I was saying, there are some situations where you would want to use this. The first is with highly compute intensive scripts. If your script is crunching a lot of data over a significant period of time and the scripts can be run independently, it's worthwhile to run them in parallel. So long as your machines um, have multiple cores to host the script block threads. In this case, the throttle limit should be set to approximately the number of available cores. The second time you might want to use this is you have a script that requires waiting on something. If you have scripts that can be run independently and perform long running tasks that require waiting, then it makes sense to run these tasks in parallel. For example, if you have five scripts that each take five minutes to run but spend most of the time waiting, you can have them all run and wait at the same time and complete them all within five minutes instead of 25. Scripts that do a lot of file operations or perform operations on external machines may benefit from running in parallel. And in these cases, you're going to want to set the throttle limit parameter to something greater than the number of cores you, you use. So as you can see um, in the second example, by using parallel parameter and the throttle limit parameter with set at three, which is approximately the number of available cores I have, we were able to significantly reduce the time it took for this script to run. So in conclusion, this feature can greatly improve your life 
for many workload scenarios, so long as you understand how it works, what its limitations are. Um, so go off and experiment and see how much faster you can make your scripts run.